Hello everyone, Lost and Nori here. Welcome to episode 2 of the Lone 101 video series. So in this episode, we'll be covering the basics of creating maps in Lone. If you don't have Lone set up already, you can follow the guide in episode 1 of the series. But anyways, let's get to it. So first off, the first time you open Lone, you might notice that it actually starts with Summit from Vanilla Celeste Open. Um, we don't want to edit this map, so we're going to create a new map. Um, the easiest way of doing this is just to file new. Um, however, before we actually create the map, we're going to do a little bit of work to set up some folders for our map. Um, if you want to share your map, you'll need to do this at some point eventually anyways. Plus, doing this gives us some nice features while we're developing the map, um, such as Everest will auto-reload the map whenever we make edits, um, and we can manage dependencies, add custom assets, and also actually give our map a name. All pretty useful things. Anyway, so we're going to just go through the effort of doing that right now before actually creating the map. Um, let's see. As it turns out, just recently a new loan plugin was released, actually, that makes doing this setup a lot easier. Um, so I'll be showing you how to do it using this plugin, and afterwards I'll also show what the folders are if you need to set it up manually for any reason. Anyways, so we're going to be using the Lone Project Manager plugin. This was created just recently by Gregovin. Anyways, this, this plugin will let us set up the folder structure needed for mods very easily from inside Lone. Um, to install it, you can just go to the Game Banana page here and scroll down until you find this button that says Olympus Everest Installer. Anyways, you can click that and Everest will install it for you. Anyways, now we can go back to Lone. Um, you might need to restart Lone for this to show up, but once you have it installed, there should be this button on the right that says Project Manager. Um, side note, as this plugin and Lone in general is in development, some things might move around or change names or that sort of thing. When that happens, I'll be sure to put notes in the description of any of that sort of thing that happens. Anyways, so with Project Manager selected, what we want to do is click New Standard Project, and then just click anywhere on the screen, and that will pull up this new dialog box. Anyways, this will prompt us for four things. Um, so first off is your username for me. That's lost in nowhere. Um, with, with all of these, I'd recommend avoiding spaces and weird characters, since those can cause weird issues sometimes. Um, and then, so... You have your username, and the other one, the other most important one is the campaign name. Um, this is a unique name for the set of maps that you're working on, uh, and so the username and the campaign name together make up something call, that I'll call the unique path, and this shows up a lot, particularly when we're working with custom assets, and it's very important for some things. Uh, so that's something to pay attention to. Anyways, for the campaign name, we're going to put Loan 101. Anyways, next is the map identifier. This is just going to be like the file name of the map itself. Um, if you're making a campaign, it's a good idea to start these with numbers so that they'll be in the right order when you open them in Celeste. They can be pretty, this can be pretty much whatever you want, though. Uh, we'll do one dash example. And then lastly is the mod identifier. This is just like the folder that the whole mod is going to be inside of. This can also be pretty much whatever. We're going to also do Loan 101 for this. Anyways, so with all that, we can click Run Script, and the tool will create an empty map for us. And this map will ha already have all of the needed packaging and folders and everything to be all set up, which is, and so it's just nice and simple. Anyways, so let's let's take a moment to go and look at what this actually did. Um, so what you'll want to do is pull up the file location of your Celeste installation. Um, where this is exactly depends on what operating system you have and how you installed Celeste, like where you where you got Celeste from. Anyways, so inside of this folder, there is going to be a mods folder, and Inside of here are all of the mods you have installed and in development. As you can see, I have quite a few. <laughs> but here is the Loan 101 folder that we just created. So 
So inside of this folder is where all of the stuff for our mod goes. So most of it's going to be in different subfolders. For now, we only have this one called maps, which is appropriately where all the maps go. So inside of this, we'll see the folder with your username for me lost in nowhere. And then inside of this, we have the one with our campaign name. And then inside of there is finally the map file, which is a .bin file. Um, so in general, the general pattern, if you're setting this up manually, is inside of your mods folder, you'll create a folder for your mod name, then a maps folder, then your username, and then the campaign name, and then you'll put the map file in there. Um, so as you can see, the unique path of your username and the campaign name shows up here inside of the folder for maps. Um, so when we're adding custom assets, usually the path will look something like this with like vanilla path plus your, custom, your unique path. That is mostly just to prevent things from conflicting between different mods, which is why it's so important. So anyways, um, one last thing about packaging. If we want to add another map to the same campaign, instead of selecting new standard project, we can just select choose map. And then in this tool, so we have this drop down to choose between the different maps in our campaign. Um, but you can also just type in a map and if it's not already there, it will create it. So that's a nice way to add additional maps. Inside of the folder structure, that would just add another map inside of this folder. Anyways, let's get to the fun part, which is actually making stuff inside the map. So before we can do anything, we need to add a room. Uh, to do that, we go to room up here and then click add. And this will create a dialog box for options for the room. Um, the main thing we need to fill out is the room name. Um, these can be pretty much whatever. I'd recommend keeping it al alphabetical because that makes Barry's order correctly. Um, a common pattern is to do a letter for a checkpoint and then a dash and then a room number. So for instance, A-01. Uh, uh, we're not going to touch the other options for now, but feel free to mess around with them if you want. Anyways, then you can click create room and it will create the room. So, before we can actually do anything to the room, you need to select the room by clicking on it. Um, you can tell if you have selected it because these arrows that let you resize the room show up. Anyways, with the room selected now, let's go over some of the tools Zone has. So one of the first things you usually want to do is to place some tiles. Um, and so you can do that with any of the tile tools. There's six of them, brush, bucket, circle, ellipse, line, and rectangle. What all of them do is pretty self-explanatory. Um, with any of them selected, you, you'll see below you have below the list of tools, you'll have this option to choose between foreground tiles and background tiles. Um, foreground tiles are the ones that Madeline will, will interact with, like standing, on, climbing, so forth. Uh, background tiles go behind Madeline and are just decorative. Um, with either of these selected, you can see to the right, there's all of the different tile types available to select. Um, so you can just choose one and then start placing tiles. Um, one other option that the circle, ellipse, and rectangle tools have is this option, other option below, whether to do it filled in or just do the outline. So that can also be useful. Um, so these are the tile placement tools. I find myself usually just using the brush and the rectangle tools, but all of them can be useful. Feel free to experiment and find what you like using the best. And one last thing for tile sets, if you want to erase tiles, you can just select the air tile and then just draw with whatever tool you want. And that will get rid of tiles. Um, and then one other thing, if you ever want to undo something, like you erased a bunch of tiles on accident, you can go into Edit, Undo, and it will undo the last thing you did. You can also do this with Control-Z. And then you can redo with the button up here, which you can also do Control-Shift-Z is the keyboard shortcut for that. Anyway, so the next important tool is the Placements tool. And so this will let us place entities, triggers, and decals. Uh, so entities 
are generally things that the player can interact with directly, like most gameplay elements. Uh, triggers are things that will have an effect if the player is inside of them, like moving the camera or changing the respawn point. And decals are essentially just decorations. So, Anyways, you'll each of these menus also has a search bar at the bottom that you can use to look for entities um, and triggers and decals. Um, for now, the only entity that we're going to mention is the spawn is the spawn point entity. Anyways, if you select this, you'll see it's a little Madeline. Um, so every room needs a spawn point or it can't be entered. Um, these are also where Madeline will respawn when she dies. Anyways, so let's place one in our room. Um, we'll go over more things about entities, triggers, and decals in future videos, but of course, feel free to explore on your own. Anyways, so now that we've placed some tiles in a spawn point, don't forget to save your map. You can do this in File and then Save, or using the keyboard shortcut Control S. Um, for some of the other tools available in Loan, Selection is the last one that Loan provides itself. This lets you select and move around different types of things, or everything, if you want to. Which can be pretty useful, so like, we can move this blob of tiles further over here. In addition to that, there are also some tools available from different plugins that can be useful. Uh, Project Manager is what we were using earlier to set up the structure of our mod. Um, scripts, it, scripts is from Lawn Scripts, and this will show all of the scripts that you have available from different mods and helpers. Uh, Room Mover is from another Lawn plugin, and as you may have guessed, this lets you move rooms, and it is very useful. Um, and last, Teleporter is also from another loan plugin, and this lets you teleport Madeline to different parts of your map when you have Celeste open, which can also be useful. Now that, anyways, now that we have a room created, let's open Celeste and test it out. So first, don't forget to save any changes you have. And then let's open Celeste. I'm just going to use one of my random modding testing saves. Anyways, then we can press it down until we find the map that we just created. And there it is. Then we can click here and go click climb and it will load. And then we have our map. So to finish up, let's demonstrate how Everest will auto reload your map when you make changes when it's packaged correctly. Um, so let's start by adding another room. Um, we'll need to change the name because every room needs to have a different name. Um, we're also going to change the position because we don't want rooms to overlap because that just makes weird stuff happen. So we can do that and then click create room. And you'll see we have this new room created. Uh, I'm going to move it up so it's a little higher up. And then let's add some more tiles. And maybe some grass, because grass looks nice. And then while we're at it, let's also change some of the tiles in our first room. And then we need to remember to put a spawn point in our new room. So let's go over here, select the room, and place a spawn point. And then don't forget to save. And then let's go back and Celeste. And as you can see, we have the changed tiles in this room. And we can go over into this room. And we can go into the new room. Anyways, that's the basics of setting up a map and loan and getting started on making one. Thanks for watching, and see all of you in the next video. And happy mapping.